wish you good. Yeah. 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 Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Of hey. <laughs> all shapes and sizes. Okay. So as we prepare for worship, we uh, you have to sit down somewhere. So please. And it's, a, it's good to see so many faces this morning. We do have a special uh, dinner time afterwards. So may our Lord's Spirit be with you while we worship. And with you also. And Roy Trusty is our uh, worship leader, our lay leader this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, I'm Roy Trusty. I'll try to be your lay leader this morning. I'm not feeling too chipper. Thank you for your continued prayers for me and BJ. Thanks, sir. Still not very good with her. It seems like every day it gets almost a little worse. Um, do we have any announcements this morning? Audrey? Yes, Wes. Yesterday, last night, we probably had the best uh, trunks of treats we have yeah. ever had. We had uh, about seven cars decorated and uh, a couple of uh, freestanders. And uh, based on Rogers Candy count, we had somewhere between 150 and 200 kids. And that includes a, a lot of families that came out and, and were there as a group. Nice. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Wednesday morning at Beale Memorial Cemetery, uh, there's going to be the annual memorial service uh, from the Lazarus Project, which uh, recognizes the uh, indigent people who have passed away during this year, and a, a memorial service to, uh, to recognize uh, those people. A community service, um, various ministers will be participating in that service. There will be some seating, um, but it's a, a very meaningful time in our community. 10 o'clock, Wednesday. Yeah, probably means. <laughs> I got too much to say, so I figured I might as well come up here. So this is our big week. We're getting ready for our sale next Saturday. So what we need help on right now, we'll be setting up Thursday and Friday. We'll be pulling out our yard sale stuff. Our plans are to have a yard sale inside, outside. We'll have a little area set up for um, we'll sell hot dogs, chili dogs, that Saturday for people that come and shop. Um, also, we're gonna have baked goods. So we need people to get out your recipes and do your special baked goods and bring them in and have them here to sell on Saturday. We need people, so people to work Thursday, Friday setting up. Saturday, we'll need people here to help with the sale. And then we always need our regular crew. We need uh, Wes, Ken, Roger at the end of the uh, sale because we don't always sell at all. So we've got to do something with all that stuff. So if you can come help us load it up at one, we're going to go to one and we'll load it up and then we distribute it to the different charities in town. So the money we raise from this, so this year, um, Jan's not in here, but I do believe we've given $3,000 just to our church. We helped with painting, we helped with air conditioning. So our money does go to help support our church. I believe our budget for the community is about $1,000. So we give out $1,000 to Sharing and Caring, Ronald McDonald House, um, one, of the, one of our new charities we're giving to the Emerald Coast Nursing Home. One hopeful place. So our money goes to a lot of the community to support. We also support the women's groups in our church. I know we've had a little, uh, we haven't gone to the retreat in a few years just because of numbers, but we support the people that do that. We support uh, the camps. Ginger's a big uh, church camp supporter. We support the camps. So the money we raise next Saturday goes and helps a lot of places. So come and support us. 
aquí y varios no surprise um, I want to thank everybody again uh, uh, in the second Saturday of this coming month don't forget it's breakfast we're having pancakes uh, our, our, our pancake flipper is not here this morning, but I'm sure he will be there. Uh, so if everybody would like to come and have pancakes, you've got plenty. Um, is there anything else? If not anything else, let's pursue the court. <laughs> those whom you choose, whom you bring to live in your sanctuary. We shall be satisfied with the good things of your house, the blessings of your sacred temple. If you would like to join me in our opening hymn, Page 86, Great is Thy Faithfulness, verses 1 and 3. <laughs>
children of God, and we have actually kids. Children. Mm. Kids. Mm-hmm. You know what? Isn't that nice to see? <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Okay. okay. Guess what next week is? Sunday. Judy's birthday. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your clocks back. November. So you get a whole extra hour to sleep. Everybody's going, yay. And then it goes till March, and then you go losing time. You to jump forward, and then you have to get up an hour early. Now, they're going to quit this, apparently. So then you would not have to be, no matter what it was, you'd have to be at the same time all the time. Now, when we go to church, if people don't get the message, what happens? Next Sunday, they'll be here early. <laughs> <coughs> and when it comes around March, they're late. So what is that? <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> is that even a big deal? Yeah, it can be, especially if the minister doesn't make time. It's only happened three or four times. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, next week we have a problem getting here because the roads will be closed. Oh, yeah. That's right. So there's always something that can happen. But most of the time, it's just us. Me, I'm late all the time. I just cannot get there. I start out early, and I'm still late. I was on time last week. No, you weren't. You were sick. Yeah. Oh, last week I was sick, but we could work. Roger's cut water. So you have things that you have to do, and you're late, somebody else has to do it. If you're early, sometimes you do somebody else's job. Then they get here and there's not anything to do. So it's just better, late or early? Early. On time. Always be on time. Early. Early. Early is the best. When they say the early bird gets the worm, well, I don't think I care for worms, but I'd like to be early for the <coughs> piece of cake or the donut or whatever. How many times have you, as a Christian, waited to do something that God wants you to do? And you put it off and you're late doing it. And maybe it doesn't have the same effect as if you were on time. And sometimes you get early and then you get even more stuff done. So God has a plan. And whether he is wanting you to be there early or wanting you to be there late, he wants you to be there. He'll take you late. If you want to come late and do something, he'll take you early or on time. But what he needs is for you to be there. Better late than never. As Christians, when we accept him, God as uh, Jesus as our Savior, luckily for us, we were on time. Even if we were late to church, being baptized and being with the accepting Jesus as our Savior was right on time. There are a lot of people out there who don't 
know God's love. You don't know that Jesus is our Savior. And they're going to be late. And before what that judgment brings. So how can we help them? Well, what's the first thing that pops to your mind? Pray. You pray for those people. Pray for the ones that need help. Pray for the ones who aren't saved. Pray for the ones who are late. And then what happens? You're there. And you can help by praying. Which helps a lot, by the way. As we've seen with illness and with other things that have come up in our lives. Prayer helps. What else can you do? Show my example? That'd be a great thing, wouldn't it? I, had, I wore a t-shirt one time, and a lady in this door told me, you know you're not going to be able to wear that much longer. And it had a saying about Jesus. And I said, I'm in America. I'm free to wear what I want. Oh, no, they're not going to allow you to. You're going to offend people. I don't care. Jesus is my Savior. God is my strength. I owe all, all to him. And I don't care who it offends. I'm a Christian. Too many people nowadays are so afraid that what they're going to do is going to offend somebody. But my point is, when it comes to God, I don't care if I offend you. You can take me as I am, a child of God. And maybe I'll be on time for things I'm going to be. <laughs> So what you need to do this week, we're going to have a test. Well, we're going to have a project. Is this week, we are going to pray, and we are going to, by our actions, show our love, to God's love to us for a whole week. I think we can do that for a week. Sometimes it's hard when you run into people who are not, shall we say, friendly. Because there's a lot that don't want to know that there is a God. Or oh, don't believe it. But if you stick to your guns, they will know that you are at least are a Christian and will stay that way. So let us pray. Dear Father, there are times when <coughs> being a Christian causes offense to some people. And I know that you want us to be kind to everyone. But I know that you want us to stand up for you also. So this coming week, let us pray for those who don't know you and your son. Let us pray for those who are going to be late and coming to you. Dear Father, as we do this this week, help us to maintain our own Christianity. And through, your, through us, show your love to all we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you for coming. When I was doing a lot of youth ministry when I was much younger, I used to plan. I used to say, tell everyone to be there, oh, probably 15 minutes before I really wanted to start, because generally people were late. So I don't know if that was good or bad, because you don't you want to get in a habit of allowing people to, to not be on time. But the old adage of 90% of life is just showing up is always true there, though. So thank you for being here. Uh, praises of the day. I did. I did see Paul. I had a Paul sign to me. So, okay. And Vicky Christ, I think I saw a hand. You did. We had a great time in Pennsylvania, and we actually met the young man that we've been praying for. He was at Jenny's birthday party on a walker. But if you remember when I first brought him up, they were giving him 25 to 30 percent chance of ever walking in. So he's on a walker. Oh, I told him that we have him on our prayer list. He thanked us all very much. And um, it's just a miracle. It is he a miracle. still has a long way to go. 
right, but it has been a, up to this point a miraculous he's recovery. So he's home again. He's, he was in the hospital. Yeah. So great. Yeah, very, uh, very good trip for y'all. Yes, yeah, very. Bill? Uh, my blessing today is that it's my wife's birthday. Yes. Yes. Happy birthday, Mary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everybody. Don't get mad at Bill. I was going to do it if you did. <laughs> so. See, I just got here earlier. <laughs> oh, nice. Jim? Yeah. in the fellowship hall, she is either guarding the food or I'm testing it. <laughs> if there is so much, we all need to go over and help take care of that. Yeah. One thing as a congregation we do pretty well is is potlucks and, and contributing there. So, um, Audrey? Just, oh, good blessing. We finally found a doctor, so now we can go from there with kids. Yeah. What a, a relief there. Just like the rush November 14th to get here. Just that, and then it can slow down. It won't, though. I know. Yeah. So. On our prayer concerns, we have uh, a praise. Janet Winkler uh, transferring over to our area in recovery. Uh, uh, Northwest, no. Rehabilitation Institute in Northwest Fort, yeah, um, out in Destin, um, recovering from and getting more strength after the uh, blood clot in her brain removal there. Betty? Um, some of you in the congregation know my daughter in law, Melanie. Uh, Melanie leaves tomorrow for a two week mission trip to the Philippines where she and some members of her church in Colorado will be bringing Christ's love to the people in, in the Philippines. That's an exciting adventure, my goodness. And her husband will stay with me for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Not as exciting. Yes. Um, also on the praises, uh, Laura Avery had a second successful foot surgery, recovering from that. And uh, so yeah, that was uh, great news there. Bill? Prayers for the souls who were in an accident at the end of our street about an hour ago. They were using the uh, tools to extract some of the victims as we were driving on our way here. Hmm. The joys of the day. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> as you see, the last time we brought her, it was uh, she was an infant. Yes. And now her, we've got another one coming. <laughs> Anna Lee, correct? Anna Lee is her name. Anna Lee. And, and now she's, she's going to be a big sister. sister. Cool. So. <laughs> Grandparents again. Yes. Big sister. <laughs> From our first service, uh, we shared. Uh, the news about Laura and uh, Jason Clark is having his second knee surgery later on this week. And Misty Young, who is not with us today, uh, at least present, is um, in the hospital recovering from an inflamed large intestine. And Richard indicated it was pretty much all of the large intestine that is uh, the problem there. So, may we be in a spirit of prayer. May our Lord be with you. With, with you also. <laughs> Loving God, we once again thank you for meeting us here, your, your children, your uh, beloved, that uh, <coughs> just want to spend some, some time with you, apart from the uh, constraints of the world, uh, the busyness of our lives. We come with a focused time to, to be with each other, 
encourage and be encouraged and be encouraged by each other. We come to sing praises. We come to learn about the ways that you impact our life. We come to lift our concerns and put them in your care, knowing that they will not only be heard, but your presence will be in the midst of our, our concerns. We give thanks for the grace that we uh, find every day. We pray that you would help us to be aware of those timely moments that, uh, that we realize that we are truly, uh, truly guided and, and many times protected by, by your care. We also come today to pray for one another and pray for those who uh, are in, in what we would call special need of your presence, Lord such as the people that were involved in the auto accident uh, near the Cobra's home. Lord, hear our prayers. Aisha? Um, just found out yesterday my father was in the hospital, but he's getting out today, but prayers for, um, they find out what's going on with him. His name is Ed Jackson. Lord, we pray along with Aisha and her family and friends <coughs> and her father, Ed Jackson. Uh, and we pray for the team of doctors that will that are looking to find what is the uh, physical need that, that Ed has. Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Um, Jeff Hall and Jeff for her friend Barry Murdy uh, in fighting and uh, against the, the factors of, of his health that are, uh, that are plaguing him in, in many ways. Lord, Lord our hear our prayers. Sister Peggy Lopez now uh, facing uh, a battle with uh, early onset dementia. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. In your holy presence, as we pray, Lord, we, we put our trust in you that uh, you are uh, a a constant support and the source of, of healing. We also continue in prayers. We remember the words of our Lord to the Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. And is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our message in music today will um, be uh, another musical message, but I would say you might be singing along in your minds uh, with the words. The words for this song are uh, found, if I can find it quickly, 
on page 562 as Karen plays because he on page 82 in the New Testament if you would like to look that up I'll give you a couple of seconds and if not you would like to read, help, read along with me on the back of your bulletin this one contains our old buddy Zacharias the famous tax collector he entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was named there Zacharias. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see Jesus, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was too short. In statue. So he ran ahead and climbed in a sycamore tree 
to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacharias, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of the one who is a sinner. Zacharias stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give <coughs> to you, to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Blessed be the reading of the Holy Scripture. So this is my third favorite portion of Scripture. I, I love this story because I could somewhat relate to it. You know, <laughs> looking at me now, you probably might not have guessed that I was really, really short when I was growing up. <laughs> were you collecting taxes? Too? I did not collect taxes. Yet. <laughs> That's good. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if I was, if I had my driver's license yet, but I was definitely in high school. Uh, and still some waitresses would ask me if I needed a children's menu. <laughs> and um, seriously, I did not crack five foot until my sophomore year of high school. Wow is right. And, uh, or 100 pounds for that matter. But uh, I, uh, I always found it uh, unfortunate that the also that the shorter girls seemed to always date the taller guys. It was just that way. And um, shame on you, short girls. <laughs> but thank God for the, uh, the taller girls that you know, I, I, I would date. And, it's, and one of the most memorable experiences, seriously, my senior prom, I wasn't dating anyone at the time, so one of my buddies said, would you want to take my sister to the prom? Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? <laughs> so we're dancing, a, a slow dance, and, and my buddy says, well, why don't you ask her to put your head on your shoulder? I said, okay, <laughs> why not? So I said, you, you know, you can put your head on my shoulder, and I kid you not, she said, I cannot get my head that way. <laughs> <laughs> So dollar for dollar, that was the worst day for me. <laughs> yeah. This way, Roger. You didn't have so far to fall. Yes. <laughs> there were some advantages, yes, close to the ground. Okay, with, as with all the gospel writers, we owe Luke a great debt because in Luke's gospel, this is the only story, the only presentation about Zacchaeus. And in turn, it's a story about what Jesus' mission and the mission of the church is all about. And this event happened while Jesus was passing through Jericho, ultimately on his way to Jerusalem and his crucifixion. So Luke takes a lot of time in Jesus' eventual last journey. So he was passing through Jericho, known as the City of Palms. And in one sentence, Luke writes the story about a human life. 
There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. That's what Luke writes about Zacchaeus. But here's a little background. Nothing in the first century in Judea was quite uh, hate was so hated as much as the Roman tax, because it was not only an affront to having to pay the tax, but an affront to the Hebrew people, because that reminded them that they were a subjugated people. And it also reminded them that they were having to pay to a king, but in their life, there was only one king, and that was the Father God. Well, to make matters worse, the dirty work of collecting the tax was not done by the Romans, but by collaborating Jews. And some of the money that they took stuck to their fingers, and that was a way for them to get rich. And we are told Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. It's the only time that that term is used in, in the uh, in scripture, chief tax collector. But he was probably a regional overseer. But it also was talking about how greedy he was and how corrupt he was. He was a little man with a big reputation. He was not just well-to-do. According to Luke, he was rich. So one might take issue with Luke with that description of the term rich, for in many ways Zacchaeus was as poor as anybody could be. Not in tangible ways per se, but he was a lonely man, an empty man. For all his money and his spirit, he had nothing. So if you were a movie producer or director, who would you cast in the role of Zacchaeus? Thank you, that's what I was thinking of. Pretty much everyone I ask says Danny DeVito. Joel Pesci. Another good one. He's on, he is kind of on my sh short list. Yeah. <laughs> so, but think about other people who would have done a great job. James Cagney. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Another one that is not so notable, but um, Rob Schneider, he paid, plays some parts, and, and he's, a, he's a short guy. Or Vern Troyer, maybe a name that, that you don't recognize, Mini but, me. huh? Mini-me. Mini-me, yes, Vern Troyer. Or a name that I thought of because of the personality is Peter Dinklage. Yes. Okay, you know who Peter Dinklage is? Yes, I do. Who is it? Yeah. He's also an elf. Yes. Yes, he uh, was an elf. Yes, yes uh, the boss. in the movie Elf, he plays Miles Finch. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think he'd be really good, too. But Danny DeVito is the overwhelming winner in uh, the congregations here. He'd be perfect. The first thing most of us think about when we think of Zacchaeus is that he was short, vertically challenged. And the second thing, we know that he was rich. And Danny DeVito can handle those two things. And the third thing we know is that he was corrupt. Danny DeVito, he has that role down. So I think he'd be great. So in my mind, it would make a hilarious scene picturing Danny DeVito in this role. Short, wealthy, corrupt, unhappy Zacchaeus, trying to see Jesus in a robe, trying to uh, climb a sycamore tree. We can almost, almost feel sorry for him. So he comes to see Jesus, who happens to be passing through Jericho, but the crowd is just too much. Jesus is attracting admirers. People have heard about the ways that, that he can heal and help people. So you can probably picture Danny DeVito hopping up and down. Uh, this isn't going to work. So he goes to the sycamore tree. And forgetting how ridiculous it must have been in people's, you know, looking at him, the wealthy tax collector trying to climb a sycamore tree in the middle of town. The people, of course, looked upon him with contempt. So, not only was he 
lost spiritually. He was, he was cut off from communion with the community. Symbolism here. It's another way of saying that he was chief among sinners. So he was prevented from seeing Jesus and being a part of the, uh, the religious community there. And it's there where I believe we find a focus. This is not just a story of Zacchaeus. This is a story of each one of us. What it means to be a lost person. I would say in America, perhaps we have oversimplified lost in saying that someone's soul is lost, but it's much, much more tragic than that, much more real. You see, Zacchaeus lost his self-respect, his dignity, his reverence, his character, his conscience, his conviction, his friends. And this story, I believe, reminds us that we stand in danger of losing everything in life that is rich and real to us. Psychologist Ed Diener once made a comprehensive study of happiness. One of the target groups was composed of American college students. A second group was composed of poor slum dwellers in Calcutta, India. Which of these two groups would you believe would be the happier group? Okay, Calcutta. Maybe you're not surprised then. But the reason is the people in Calcutta had relationships, a network of people uh, who lived life with them. Material wealth, no. But relationships bring happiness. And, and relationships with family and friends and a relationship with God. So Zacchaeus had loads of money, but he was despised by others, and he did not know God. So he sought to see Jesus. And you can be sure that it was not the excitement and the thrill of the parade. Because if you're a person who's despised and hated by a group of zealous people in a parade, it could turn ugly quickly, could it not? Yeah. Mob mentality, hey, there's a traitor! Yes, it could turn ugly fast. So Zacchaeus had to know something, some possibility uh, in, in Jesus. He, had, he was drawn to okay. the magnetism of Jesus, <clears throat> I believe. One theologian I, I read about has a particularly interesting theory about grace. And his theory is that one does not seek acceptance or forgiveness if one knows that he's not going to receive it. Because you're not going to go to a person if you know that you're going to get a lecture on morality. So Zacchaeus was very hopeful that he would receive grace People don't set themselves up for, for failure. So Zacchaeus comes to Jesus because he had heard the stories of how the master had received and forgiven adulterers, tax collectors. He had healed the crippled and the blind, the outcasts of society, people just like him. Zacchaeus came because of the drawing power of grace. That's the same kind of grace that caused us to be drawn to Jesus. Or perhaps John Newton, a convicted or a converted slave trader who wrote these immortal words, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So once again, Zacchaeus, being a short stature, could not see for the crowd. Although, if we read this correctly, Let's take another look here, because I want to throw a little bit of a curve here. Listen closely. If I can find it here. Should have had it bookmarked. Okay. He climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. Okay. Zacchaeus 
Okay, he was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd could not because he was short in stature. So if you're an English teacher, what does the phrase, because he was short in stature, what does that modify? He couldn't see. Well, it modifies either Jesus or Zacchaeus. Ah, so perhaps Jesus was short and not Zacchaeus because he was short of stature. Could be modifying Jesus. Could be talking about both of them. Or it could be talking about both of them. We don't know, but we always think, seriously, we think of Jesus as tall, mm -hmm. at least tall for uh, a, a person in that area of the world, and we always think of Zacchaeus as being short. But he climbed a tree at any rate to get a better view. Hmm. You see, his inaccessibility to Jesus was more than literal here. I believe it was also symbolic. Hmm. Desire for power and love of money, perhaps revenge upon the Jewish leadership, or just plain greed separated him from the community of faith. Hmm. But with us, we are blocked by sinful behavior, perhaps by prejudices against us. Let me ask you, have you ever been misjudged with your character? I, if I'm not guilty, nothing makes me more angry than having my integrity challenged. Perhaps that's that way with you, too. If I'm guilty, I usually fess up and say, yeah, you're right. But I was amused and saddened at the same time by a very small piece of news about misjudgments one year around Halloween, people in Salem, Massachusetts exonerated 20 women who were accused of being witches in 1692. Hmm, a little late, I think, on that misjudgment forgiveness. Hopefully we would never do something that, in which we would be judgmental, would we? Hmm, if we're honest, there have been moments in the history of the church, Big C Church, when people could be identified more with the Pharisees than with Jesus. Sadly, people have come to the institutional church and they have found in the people of God what they did not like in the world, competition or jealousy or greed or hatred or, worst of all, unwarranted judgment. That's a warning for us, I believe. You see, the scribes and the Pharisees criticized Jesus, misjudged him, I guess, because he was going to be the guest of a sinner. Not just any sinner, the chief sinner. Hypocrisy popped up there. And those Pharisees and scribes did not understand about the nature of life, about the nature of being lost, about the nature of Jesus, about the mission of Jesus. Perhaps they had forgotten the fathers of their own faith, our own faith. Moses was a murderer. Jacob was a con man. David was an adulterer and murderer. So none of us are above the need for grace. All are in need of God's saving power from the so-called scum like Zacchaeus or the pious religious Pharisees. So thank God Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. For if he had not, we would not have had this, this definition of what a Savior is today. This is the story of the saving act of God. And Jesus said there is more joy in heaven over one repentant sinner than 99 people who think they don't have any need for repentance. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. 
And then the most remarkable thing happened. It doesn't always happen, but it happened for Zacchaeus. He was instantly a changed person. Most people take change over time, but Zacchaeus said, I'm a changed person. You know what I'm going to do? For everyone that I've abused, I'm going to give back 50% of my wealth. 50%. And sometimes we think that tithe is a dirty word, 10%. And we might say, well, it's easy for him to do because he was so wealthy. Well, maybe, but Jesus told us about a widow who gave 100% of what she had. It's all relative. But I will say this. There was no tear-jerking emotional appeal for giving. Zacchaeus was a genuinely changed man. The law said give 10%. Zacchaeus went way, way beyond that to what Jesus called in another parable, the second mile. So this story of Zacchaeus is the classic about being lost and about being saved. Not just a soul, but being saved to a better life. Once ostracized by the crowds, the leadership, by your very own people, You see, a person is lost when he or she has wandered from God. Sometimes so far that everyone turns on you the way they turned on Zacchaeus. But thanks be to God that Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. That's what Christ's mission was all about. So the infamous Zacchaeus became a big man. Not because of his stature grew, grew, but because he had grown in grace. And that's what being saved is about. So I, I had a good time last night, and the, the children were, were really sweet, but two particular comments from came, uh, stuck in my mind today when I thought about the, what the children said. The first one, I'll give you a little glimpse here. I, I'm not a creative person, but I did dress up like an angel last night. I had my baptismal gown here <clears throat> and these wings. And I had, you know, white pants, white shoes, white, uh, white shirt, so did I thought... Did you get a picture? I don't know. <laughs> Probably Kathy might have gotten a picture. You see, picture. you should have come. How much, yeah. how much you pay me for him? Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, this little girl comes up to me and she looks at me. She goes, "Are you supposed to be a fairy godmother?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I said, "No, I'm, I was trying to look like an angel. But, you know, maybe not." The second little girl, she had just gone. Uh, from uh, the, the library setup that, that Wes had and got some treasure uh, over there and she comes up and, and, and gets some candy she goes question why don't you pass out vegetables instead of candy <laughs> I'm like I've never heard that question I said but it might give us something to think about so, I don't know, maybe potatoes next year? I don't know. <laughs> one, one little kid didn't want books, didn't want to read, and Wes had ink pens in his pocket. She goes, hey, can I have an ink pen? So, so Wes, Wes can hand out ink pens. <laughs> to, to, to each his or her own, I guess. So, maybe when we've thought about the, uh, the Last Supper that Jesus shared with the disciples, why did he choose bread and wine. He could have chosen something else and used that as a metaphor. Off the top of my head, he could have said something like, and this is the kersha paste that is pounded and, and pressed and for you, like my body will be. I think he certainly was correct in choosing bread and wine. Because bread is the sustenance for life, and God's presence is the sustenance of life for, for the believer. 
and wine representing the spirit. It would be strange if we did not hear these words about the bread and the cup. Our Lord saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. This is my blood shed for your sins. Take and drink. Every time we come to the table and realize that sacrifice that Jesus provided for each one of us, we realize that God loves us. And every time we partake here, we celebrate that until it comes. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we know that your Son came to save us. We ask that through this symbol, symbolic taking of bread and wine, that you will be with us. Help us to remember. Help us to show us much love as Christ did by giving his life for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At the table, Christ took the bread and broke it and said, eat of this, this is my body broken for you. And they ate. Then he took the cup and blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is the blood that, I, that was spilled for you. And they drank it. Amen. This morning's reflection, uh, stewardship reflection moment this morning. <coughs> oh Lord, by your providence, we are now in this holy place. Grant that we stay in what we feel shall be acceptable to you. For you are our strength and our redeemer. This morning's offering prayer. Pray with me for this. We confess, O oh God, that we offer often inclined to ask for things and happenings 
that are beyond your purpose. Yet we come to you and ask you rule out what is not pleasing to you. What are may be harmful to us. We believe that the spreading of good things of Jesus Christ is in every age will. Therefore we pray that we may be more and more contained to the purpose and willing to support the work of your kingdom through our stewardship. Amen. Just ten verses in Luke. So amazing that uh, that that story is probably one that we learned in Bible school through the years and when we uh, Zacchaeus. So, what do we learn about the saving grace of God, the saving act? Well, we learn that we're all in need. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, this is a time where we invite you uh, uh, to make a commitment or to uh, perhaps uh, make a commitment to our congregation. So as we stand and share our closing hymn on page 99, if you have a decision to, to make, please come. And I would encourage you to sing this song, maybe even with a smile, uh, as a song of praise to God. May we stand again. That, that, that we may enjoy it. We thank you for your presence in this worship service and in our fellowship together. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 Now as we close this time of worship, please join me in, our, in singing our closing chorus printed in our bulletin. <laughs> Thank you.
to seek and to save whoever is lost. Amen. 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 Just warn you've got Indiana chili over there. Don't have Florida juice in Indiana. <laughs>